Thanks, Drew, and uh, good day to everybody, and thank you for taking time out of your day to, to sit in on our uh, webinar on adaptive uh, software, adaptive BBS. Uh, I am Tim Boyer. I'm the Chief Technology Officer at DACRA Management Systems, uh, and, and one of the, the part of the team that helped develop this. So to give some background on why we've rolled this product out, I thought I'd cover a few slides ahead of time, but really we, we developed adaptive BBS to help eliminate some of the struggles people are finding with stagnant BBS processes and communication failures. So we'll talk a little bit when we get going about how we've added a couple additional feedback channels that can really kind of help re-engage the, the, your whole process and the people that are doing the observations. And, and the biggest thing that we're doing is we're really trying to support multiple feedback channels. Um, we've got the, the just blessing of the luck that we've got millions of observations from our previous systems that we've been able to apply some of the new learning technologies and take a look at where gaps start in systems and why systems start to maybe fail over time. Um, and one of the things we really found out about is, is there's just not enough feedback channels in the system. So we've really worked on increasing that. So we're hoping that with some of the things that we've put in, we, we can uh, make tracking things a little more efficiently for you and help re-engage the employees uh, to re-engage your program. So what is adaptive? Why is adaptive? One of the first thing we really looked at is uh, with comparable systems and even our old systems is it's kind of hard to put observations in. Uh, so one of our starting goals that we had and, and one of the things we mined our data is how can we make this more efficient? How can we make it more efficient for the observer to actually not just enter an observation but to really get a fuller data set so you have a better picture of what's going on. So we started with a goal of, hey, let's build a system that the observer can actually get a system, uh, observation put into the system in 10 seconds. And I'll show you what we've done to kind of move towards that, along with providing richer data to give you better analytics. Um, the other thing we really focused on is support and improve kind of any behavior-based safety methodology. Uh, a lot of systems kind of or, or lean towards one or the other, and you, you kind of miss some opportunities. So what we really want to do is build a system that would adapt to what your needs are uh, to be able to deliver the results that you want. Said before, we really focused on increasing feedback channels. So we did a lot of research into why do systems shift into failure over time? What happens? Why, why do people lose engagement? Why do systems uh, go stagnant? And, and what we really found out is we needed to increase our feedback channels, and we need to really include the observer. Um, honestly, the quality of your entire system is dependent on the quality of the people doing the observations. Uh, so we put a lot of work into how we can help drive that. And then increase data quality. There's just a lot of gaps that we saw in existing systems that even tie back into doing the quick observations. The other thing we want to do is, and we know as we try to find data scientists that they're really hard to find, but in a lot of systems, we're looking at our hourly people and our steering committees, and we're expecting them to be data scientists. So, you know, we were guilty of that in some of our old systems. So what we really tried to do is not give you reports. We just tried to give you, uh, you know, access to the insights so you could make, you know, actionable uh, items to change, you know, change process and drive safety at your facilities. So some of the things I like to get out of the way up front is just some of the technology features. So adaptive is brand new. And the great thing about brand new is we get to use all the really new cool things that are happening out here. So number one, it's a cloud-based system and it's built that way from the ground up. Uh, Everything in the system is automatically updated. So if we come out with a great new idea, report, uh, you guys give us new ideas, we can, we can actually share those with everybody quickly. Uh, we're hosting everything on Amazon Web Services, mainly because they're, they're the leaders right now. Um, they give us a lot of availability, a lot of different areas. Uh, we can talk more about that in a minute. But Another thing is just state-of-the-art technology that they give us access to. So we're using a lot of new things like machine learning uh, to get to data insights, artificial intelligence. Um, we're using natural language processing. We'll talk about that. And it's uh, built as an open API system. So 
you know, if you want to be able to pull data out of here, use it in Tableau, use it in any of your other reporting systems, uh, we've exposed everything with the right security keys. It's your data. You can pull down what you need to. And then the other thing is, is we, we built it with security baked in from the ground up. So we are GDPR compliant. Our processes are ISO 27001 certified. We know that's a big issue, so we, we just have built it in we, uh, from, from day one. And another great thing that we have, uh, we didn't have before using Amazon, is we have data portability. So what that means, uh, you can host the data where you want it. So before where we may have, you know, had a cloud product, but everything was stored in Virginia, you know, now if your systems require that you need to store data in Europe or even uh, with some of our clients in the government cloud to AWS, we have those options. So we're, we're really able to break it out to give everybody the, the full benefits of using a cloud system um, to meet their needs. It, one of the things I start with is I always want to talk a little bit about why systems slip. And I always like to start with this slide. I think it will help kind of drive where we're going. So one of the things we, we noticed as we looked at all these millions of data and we started running it through our own algorithms and, and looking at why systems shift into failures, we found out that you, you, you see a lot of places fall into this, we call it a, a limited field of view. So if you go back to when you started your BBS process or if you're thinking of st starting one, you know, on the front end, Generally, you have an expert uh, company come in to help you, you know, establish a good process. And, and they're always good processes. And we get everybody engaged, and we go through your incidents over the years, and we look at where your, your exposures lie and where your risks are. And then based on that, we build a checklist. So this checklist is to go out there and allow your observers to have conversations with people. And it's all great, but over time things happen and, and things start shifting. And there's a lot of reasons for it. Uh, we're actually starting to push out a couple of white papers that can go into it. But what can happen is, if you look at the chart on the left, this is an individual observer, one of our clients. Over the course of the year, he did 112 observations. So we would all say, hey, that's a, that's a pretty engaged employee. But take a look at what he's seeing. So it's a really limited field of view, right? Um, you know, why is that? Well, there's a lot of reasons, and some of it just comes into feedback. So is anybody talking to this person to provide the coaching you need? And how would you even understand, you know, when you have a hundred or a thousand observers who needs this kind of coaching? So this is one of the, the issues we really try to address, and we'll talk about it further on. The other interesting thing on this is it's not an isolated problem. So you think, hey, we're doing 10,000 observations, so what that one guy sees isn't going to affect our outcomes and our overall sustainability, but the chart next to it is showing 6,000 observations done in this, in this observer's department. And you, you can see the influence of social thinking, right? They're seeing the exact same thing. So those gaps, those areas that you're not looking at, those, those are blind spots, right? Those are things that were identified early in the process and for one reason or another, over time, people quit looking at it. So, you know, we've got data that shows that this doesn't just happen over a year. It may take two or three years when you're focused on possibly, you know, you become a slave to the process and not to what the process was intended to do. And then we see areas where this thing does not shift over time. I mean, we're talking over eight, ten years. That's kind of stagnation. That's when we start hearing from people, you know, how come we're not seeing the improvements? Why aren't we sustaining? So here's another thing that we were really focused on, and how can we, how can we help eliminate that uh, through technology? So with that said, I'm going to go into uh, – uh, oh, sorry. We'll start in on just a demo of the product. Just go on again. Sorry, my apologies. So – this is Adaptive BBS, and we're just going to start and show you a bit about where you start. And, and the starting place always is the dashboard, right? So we're trying to help people track these actionable items, the things that are important. And you'll see a lot of things here that, that I'm sure will apply to the systems that you're currently using. Um, and what we try to do is just look outside at a lot of different systems and go back and study the science of behavior-based safety. And these are the things that people are preaching. So, you know, out of the box, we're already tracking things like review rates, you know, what percent of your observations are being coached. 
Observation quality we'll spend a lot more time on. Um, that's just an overview of, you know, what is the quality of your overall systems? Are people seeing what it is you'd like them to see? Um, we have a goal setting structure. I didn't pull in the right group to be able to show that one, but if you're asking your employees to do two observations per month or four, we can track those goals for you on individual department levels. Uh, so you can keep track, contact rate, contact rate, participation rate. Another thing that we've added that I think is missing in a lot of systems is the, tr the chance to track these high risk at risk. So yeah, you develop this whole list of, of exposures that you want to keep an eye on, but let's face it, some of them are more high risk than others. And sometimes it can be like trying to find a needle in a haystack. So we have it set up that you can actually identify those on the front end, and then you can get straight to the data. So in this case, uh, you know, this is a client that they were having a problem blocking exit doors. So in a manufacturing distribution facility, that can lead to a lot of problems. Instead of having to dig around, you click on the high risk, every exposure's in here. We have the details on what the task was that was being observed. We have the details of you know what the exposure was, you know what the actions are. So you're not digging around looking for this stuff. It's right to you, so you're creating you know actionable information. Um, go back to our dashboard. The other thing that we're tracking is, is some of your base level things. So you know if you need to know what your top five at risks are, everything on here is click through, just like what I showed you on the high risk. So if people are not working, using the proper lifting technique, you click the button, you're right at your data. This is all driven by your permissions level that you grant your users. So if I'm a plant level person, I'm only gonna see my plant. If I'm a corporate level person, I can see the roll up of all of my data. Um, another thing that we've added in is actually the ability to add action items from multiple places. So what's an action item? An action item could be anything from in an observation, an observer, you know, is having a discussion with a worker, they find a barrier, they can put it in the system, save it as a barrier, it automatically creates an action item we, that, that you can follow up on. So now you have a way to track that the things that you're finding are being fixed. We also have ways that you can add these <clears throat> from a steering committee corporate level that when you're taking a look at the overall data, if you, if you see something you need to do, go ahead and put the action items in and we can track things. Another area that we're doing that's a lot different, and we talked a lot about you know, feedback and, and the quality of your systems, but you know, we ask people all the time, I could have a conversation with you know, 10 different organizations, and I'll ask the question, hey, are, are your observers providing, what kind of feedback are they giving? And, and almost to a T, they'll say, well, I think we give positive. Well, we're actually able to now use some really cool machine learning algorithms, natural language processing, that we help uh, we help teach a model. We can actually take the comments that they put into the system, and I'll show this in a report. But we can tell you. So you may think you're giving 90% positive feedback or appreciative, but what we're finding out is it's probably closer to 90% neutral if feedback was given at all. So it now gives you an empirical measurement that you can start working on towards improvement. And then just some of the other things to be able to track. You know, what's our percent safe over time? Uh, you know, are we holding with our observations? And again, any one of these could be clicked through on a date, on anything, so you can get straight to the data and the insights that you need. Now, we first talked about entering a 10-second observation, so I'm going to go straight into the things that we accomplished doing that. So again, we, we have millions of data points or millions of observations that we're able to go mine along with a lot of the having conversations with the users that put it in. So, you know, one of the biggest things we see, especially when people are doing paper observations, is we ask for a lot of really good information that helps fill out the story of what the guy was doing. <clears throat> so we, we kind of want to know, you know, not just who the observer was, but where was he doing an observation, and what department was he in, and what shift? Well, it, what we find in paper systems is sometimes the people don't know, they, they don't care, they don't fill it out. So what we've done is in the background, um, we're able to tie these people together. So if we know that, that this observer generally works in the second shift in the maintenance department and the areas he's assigned to would say be a loading dock, we pre-populate it. And what that does is it really gives you rich data. So now 
you know, when you're trying to figure out what these at-risk tasks are, you have context. So you're able to really drill down and you'll see in our reporting that you can pull this back up. And this is configurable to your company. So you can add your areas and your departments and your employees. And let's say that uh, this observer was doing, you know, an observation in another department. It's no big deal. It's there. But what we're trying to do, especially driving towards our mobile devices, is we're trying to get that that rich detail information there and let them focus on the, the true reason why we're doing observations. Um, another thing that we've added, and, and any of the people, and I see several on here that, that may be looking at switching over from our sister company product, Rencon, and, and Adaptive is going to be the replacement for Rencon moving forward. But we can also carry across your variables and your flags. Anything that you've been collecting in the past, we can pull together. And, and we have a, a reporting layer that you can actually get this information back out of it. Um, so tasks observed, and I actually pulled down my wrong checklist, so I apologize. We've added another feature for richer data, and we call them task tags. So you know, go back and look at your data now, and are you getting a really complete story about where these risks are happening, or? or where these observations are happening. So we're using intelligent tagging. We can actually go through and you can start building out a list of what it is that your people do. So now you have a complete story instead of just, you know, uh, mind not on task and not having any context. You now can add these task tags and you can see exactly what they were doing, what area they were in, what shift they were in. That's that rich data that we were really focused on. But we make it extremely easier for the, the easy for the employee to pull out those activities. So you can actually drill down on this and be able to show what it is that they were doing when they did it. So you can build out a contextual image of what was safe and what was at risk. Everything else is going to look like your standard system. Uh, one of the things that I should have pointed out is uh, we built this product to be uh, web or mobile responsive. So what that means is if you're using a mobile device, oh, sorry, that's what I get for clicking too many buttons. If you're using a mobile device, the page will fall over. So if you have an iPhone, iPad, uh, natively it's going to fit to the page and you can use it. So a lot of big buttons. We are also developing and soon to release an offline application. So the offline application, you know, we'll be able to do everything that we're showing here. Uh, I'm sorry, this right, but able to do it in an offline mode and then check the observations in later. Um, so let me fix this. There we go. <laughs> Again, apologize for my technical uh, too many screens going here. So really what we're trying to do is drive into the quality of the observation. I'm going to blow that up a little bit. There we go. The other thing that we've added is we're trying to give other context. So here's an area that we can actually, you know, we, we're trying to drive the observer. Again, this is the quality of your system into putting in, what are you talking to the guy about, right? So is he pencil whipping? you know, just doing some kind of uh, safety sampling or is he actually truly having a conversation? So we have a spot where the observer can put in exactly what it was that he, that he talked to the guy about, and then you can start trapping. Was it appreciative? Did he give coaching feedback? We can start uh, giving you detailed information, and honestly, we can help drive this guy into, into doing better observations. And again, that's going to lead to sustainability. So. Once the observation's put in, then we've added a new kind of cycle that not many systems use, and it, it has to do with uh, being able to come in and do reviews of these observations. So the review part of it is a great chance for the observer to, to give feedback. So, you know, he can look, you can look at the observations, and I'm sorry, I've got to switch this again. Somebody's changed around my site, so I've got to pick the right uh, observations. Excuse me for just a second. <laughs> All right, I'll change the date.
Okay, this will get me to where I need to have the data that I'm looking for. So, my apologies for fat fingering on the screen. So what we have is, you know, here's somebody, team member, driving a forklift to load a customer. You can see they had their seat belts on, you know, use this horn. They came in, they, you know, they put in good comments. So observe team member, they put on their seat belt, started the forklift. Here's the observer, told him I appreciate him being safe using the seat belt, uh, you know, and to keep it up. So he's actually giving feedback. You know that he actually had a conversation. So now what you can do as a reviewer is you can come in and provide feedback. And this is really the missing link that we've been seeing. And I'll show you how this gets shared back with the employee. But then we also have a STAR system. Now we, we looked at using machine learning on this uh, to be able to fill it out. But basically what we found out is it doesn't have the same impact as if a user uh, reviewer would use this as a teaching moment. So if the guy did a great job, Tell them great job, let them participate in the feedback, you know, give them five stars. If the person didn't have a conversation, they're missing it, give them fewer stars, and I'll show how that works. But one of the other things we know that if you're on a steering committee, you actually have to review these observations. You know, you have other full-time jobs. So going into a system and having to dig around and find what to review can take a lot out of people. So we've actually even thought through that one. One of the things we found out, we we're exploring our data, but once a reviewer comes in, marks something, reviews and updates, and all they have to do is hit the review next. What the review next is gonna do is take them to the next available observation that needs reviewed. So they don't have to spend all of their time messing around trying to figure out what they need to do. We're just focused on helping that person, the observer get their job done, which is to have a quality contact, the reviewer to have a, you know, get their job done, which is, focus on providing that usable feedback to the, to the observer. So one of the other things that we've added in this is a, is a personal dashboard. So again, one of the fail points that we've seen in the system is that people do not provide feedback to the observer. A lot of times we have the observer out there, he's coming in, he's telling somebody, you know, giving feedback about proper lifting, whatever. But then you have all of these thousands of items where nobody's focused on telling the observer a good job. And we've heard horror stories about, you know, even the observers collecting a lot of paper data, they set the box for 30 days, three months, forever, and, and nobody's given access to the data. Well, as an observer, why would I be engaged in that process, right? Nobody's telling me good job. Nobody's correcting that shift when you might see people shifting into a, into a failure for, you know, are starting to pencil with. So one of the things we do is we can actually take that feedback and when, a, when an observer logs in, the first thing he sees is, is his feedback score. So we're doing a little gamification, you know, the five star systems, you know, if I'm only getting three stars, what can I do to improve? And honestly, if you're only giving three stars, you ought to be telling them here what to do to improve. But, you know, here's a point that he actually hey, I went out, I did something, you know, I, I put my soul into it, I'm trying to be part of the program. Now the, the reviewer could come back and say, excellent observation feedback, you know, positive reinforcement changes our culture. We can constantly reinforce this, this feedback to the observer, which is gonna drive sustainability in your systems. One of the other things that we have in this ability to, you know, add corrective actions or action items from any place in the system, you can also come in and I can look at where I'm at on any corrective actions that's been assigned to me, or let's say I a corrected, or a, assigned a corrective action, I can check on the status of those. <clears throat> so all the stuff that I have to keep track of in the system is delivered to me in my dashboard. Another interesting thing that we've added is we're actually bringing the statistics of that observer into him. So he, he'll know, right, where he's at. So let's say that you know, in the group that I'm in, that, you know, my star rating's a, a four and the, and the group's a five, then, then I could expose it to them. Or how many observations I'm averaging compared to the next person or what my score is. One of the other things that we're doing that's a little unique is we're having a, looking at the unique exposure count. This comes back to the field of view. You know, what we see is 
you may come in and you may have an observer. The unique exposure is how many individual exposures they looked at. You know, over the course of the year, I can tell you, if somebody's looking at every one and they're all 100% safe, there's a good chance they're, they're pencil whipping. And on the other side of that, you know, if I'm only looking at two exposures and everybody else is looking at eight, it could be one of two things. Either A, I'm just using the system as a complaint system, or B, I'm pencil whipping. So right now we're just exposing the data. Our goal is to be able to come back in here and deliver insights to this observer. So hey, maybe you need to be looking at you know these three things that you haven't looked at all year. Maybe you need to be looking in this area. So our long-term goal is as the data comes in is to use machine learning and to actually be able to build out the insights that this turns from statistics into actually data that we can help nudge that guy into being a better observer and making sure that that all of the exposures in your workplace are are, are covered. One of the other things that we do is in most systems, if there's any feedback, a lot of times it's just printing out a checklist and hanging on a bulletin board. So we actually deliver this guy's organizational top five at risk items to him in his dashboard. Why is that? Well, he can look to see what everybody else is doing. So if he's always 100% safe and he sees that, you know, there's these other at risks, we're trying to nudge him into, to, you know, making a, a better observation when he's out there. So that's kind of the whole loop around how, uh, how we do the 10 second observation, how we help aid in the reviews. You know, I, I kind of breeze past the fact that you can assign people to different roles. They can be an observer, a reviewer, they could be a coach. Uh, if they're a coach, they, they can show up at observation so you can track who's coaching. But I think the real things that, that we get into and focus on and the power of the system has a lot to do with the, the reports. And again, what we're trying to do with the reports is not make you dig for data. We're trying to be able to bring the insights. So some of the interesting things that we, we do is we can look at exposure stats. So what are the most important things in your system? What are people finding? So what we can do right now is we can actually list all your exposures and we can come straight in and you know show you your most at risk to your lowest at risk. Now if you see what happens, but if I switch between these exposures, it takes me uh, directly to where the observation was entered takes me to my comments. So I'm not digging around forever. I get straight into the, to the comments that were put in. This gives you guys insights. You, you can be able to look on each and every exposure. Uh, for our friends that are coming over from RENCON, then the behavior type would be your enable, non-able difficult. So you can sort and filter even on those. So instead of digging around running 100 reports, you can come straight into this run the data that you want. You know, you can throw it off to Excel if you want to take a look at more data. So you have access to your data at all times. And, you know, any way you want to take a look at it, anyhow you want, you know, you'll be able to come back into the system and, and get to the data that you need to get to. Um, some of the other things that we've added into this are if you have multiple locations or if you have people that are, uh, say, you know, remote, we do have geolocation built into it. So, you know, this would just be able to come in and give you a quick overview of, hey, you know, how am I doing at my different locations for a quick overall comparison? So it's another way to get to the data that you need quickly. Uh, you know, here's your comparisons. You can have quick conversations. You're going to know where your risks are at. Um, you know, we're going to be able to show you percent safe. Um, some of the other things that we're doing with machine learning, I think, that are pretty good is looking at exposures over time. So before, again, our, our steering committee guys are not, you know, for, they're generally not data scientists. Um, let me change this again real quick. So where do you even start? So to improve your process, how do you know, you know, how, what's happening in your system? So what we can do is we can actually run the stats for you. So are you improving? Um, are you, is it trending down? So we can come in and run these reports and you'll be able to know off your systems, what, what is it I need to work on? Um, yeah, that might be a dangerous report. I see that we've been using mine for play data. The other thing is looking here, you can also see how many observations the sampling was. 
if you see something that's trended down, you can create an action item right here. You don't have to leave the system. So again, the steering committee people can drop an action item in. You, you can actually start looking at the data and use it to make improvements in your systems. Um, another bit that we're doing, I think, that's a little out there and most people aren't doing, but it comes back to we talked about the uh, sentiment analysis. So, you know, I may ask you, are your, uh, are your observers given positive feedback? And, you know, you're going to say yes or no, but how do you really know? Like I said, we can send this data off. And we trained a machine learning algorithm, and I'll kind of pardon this one because it's, it's my sample data, so it'll be all over the place. But we can tell you where you're at. You can actually set goals to work with your people to improve, uh, improve the, the feedback. So we, we, we measure the feedback that's given by the observer to the employee, and then we can also measure the feedback given by that reviewer. Again, you're, you're trying to build sustainability quality. You gotta talk to your observers. And this way you can come in and take a quick look and hey, are you, are you really telling the guy he's doing a good job? You know, if you go back to the real science of behavior-based safety, the foundational bit, you know, it takes positive reinforcement to change a behavior. And it takes multiple times to be able to change a lasting behavior. What we're doing is actually building these conversations into the system where you can measure that and, and be based on the science of the system. Um, another thing that we're doing, and I think it's really great as you just sit down, especially talking to management, is we've added a word cloud, which sometimes they, they, they can be a little overused, but if you want to see the conversations that your people are having, you know, this is what you want your observers to be hearing, right? So word cloud just takes, we, we bust the words out of every comment that they put in, and then we rank them by size of the time they're using. Now, this is sample data I pulled in from one of our clients. Their system is called Core. But you can see they're giving feedback, right? They're telling the people, great job. So it's a, it's a really quick way to understand the words that are being used. And we pulled in data from other, other you know, clients as we're bringing them in on some conversions. Number one, we're finding it just doesn't exist. The conversation doesn't happen. Other cases, we're finding out that the only comments put in are negative, right? So if you go back to the science of behavior-based safety, you can change behaviors with, with negative feedback, but it's not lasting, right? It's, it's avoidance, and that's a whole different problem. So we're trying to build in this modern technology to be able to look at, you know, we look at why systems fail and to help you try so it doesn't fail. Um, another thing that we've added is observer stats. So you can come in here and you can take a look at all of your observers. What are they seeing, right? Um, so over the course of time, even if you have a thousand, you know, you can run these off. You can find the guy that's doing 200 observations and 100% clean sheets. You probably need to go talk to that guy, right? That's a pretty solid sign of, of pencil whipping. But we break all the data down. Again, the, the next goal that we have is to use this to develop insights to be able to flag the observers that you should go talk to. And even with that, you know, I think everybody does coaching in their systems. So we actually go through and build out reports. We can tell you by group, by person, who needs coaching, right? Who's been coached, who hasn't been coached. So we can actually help you set these, these uh, conversations up as you come in to understand that, you know, hey, the first thing is, you know, all of these people that have never done an observation, which this is my day friend, they need coaching. Or the last time they were coached, you know, what are they seeing? What are their star rankings? So now you know you have a smart way to be able to go out and identify the people that, that need, you need to have a conversation with and have the conversation. And that's gonna drive sustainability and drive your, your quality. Uh, one of the last things I really wanted to hit on is, you know, it's your data. Sometimes you guys, not sometimes, you're generally a lot smarter than we are. You have very specific needs. So we gave you the ability to come in and, and do ad hoc reporting. So anybody that's ever had to take data off and throw it into a Excel spreadsheet, hit a pivot table, we give you access to all of your records. So you can look at your, you know, your observations, you can put a date for it range in, you know, put in your locations. Anything that you have in, including your flags and variables, you can now run in this in this report. So if we haven't thought about it, you can think about it. 
Um, you can come in and build your own report out. You can add your own charts. You can save it. Um, you can actually, you know, log in as other people, save it to them. You have access to build all your own reporting outside of what we've done. Um, some of the other things that we have built into the system, just to cover real quick, is we have alerting systems that you can set up all your own notifications. So, you know, if you need to know that an action item was assigned to you, you'll get an alert in the system. This will alert you. Uh, you can get an alert when your observation has been reviewed. We're adding new workflow along this. So basically, we're trying to make it so you don't have to go hunting for data, that we can help bring the data to you. Um, and honestly, with that, I, I, this is a quick overview. There's a lot more to come with this. Like I said, our main goal is to make you, your people more successful in the systems. Uh, machine learning technology has come light years ahead, and we're tapping into that. So what we have now works. We've got a lot of users using the system. I think they're seeing very positive results. Um, I think a lot of them are seeing many positive results around uh, increasing their feedback channels. Um, we're actively, for the people here that are, are Rencon users, we have a nice process set up for that where basically you can just do a backup of your database, send it through Martine Harrow at, at OSR, and we can, we can import your users' checklist data. Uh, the system supports multiple checklists, so you can have as many checklists as you need. You can assign the checklist to different locations. Um, we, we have translation, so we've really tried to think through a lot of the things that, that people need. I think putting it on the cloud really frees up uh, a lot of your resources to focus on behavior-based safety improvements and not have to worry about babysitting systems. So uh, with that, if there's any questions, we can, we can wrap up. Uh, the first thing I do want to point out is if anybody has questions, I'll leave some contact information up. I hope. Well, there we go. Sorry for my technical uh, difficulties today. Oh. Well, Tim's bringing that up. If you do have any questions, let's go ahead and put those into the, type those into the question box right now as well while he pulls that up for us. I think it's up now, I hope. Yep, there it is. We'll give a few minutes here for any questions that anyone has. And then, uh, yeah, Tim has put the contact information up there for you. So go ahead and contact Lindsay Johnson. She's our director of sales and marketing and will uh, – and we'll get back to you with any kind of questions you have on utilizing this. Yep, and please reach out to us. I know overviews are not always the, the greatest way to do this, but if we've got you thinking, just reach out to Lindsay, and we'd be love to have a, a more detailed conversation about how we can make this work with your organization. And I have to apologize. We did have one person say they were not able to. Oh, we have a question coming in. Here we go. Um, so, uh, so Donnie, on the SAP question, what I can tell you is with the open API, the answer would be yes. Um, SAP, it's always a question of interacting with what. So since all the data is available, we can do it. We, you know, if it's getting employees into the system, yeah, we're set up to be able to handle, handle that. We're adding to our, our uh, single sign-in capabilities, but it really depends on what it is. If it's pulling out information, then yeah, we have all the instructions available that, that we can interact with SAP. All right, and looks like Cammy has a question here. Um, existing RINCON data, can existing RINCON data be imported into the adaptive BBS system? Yes, yeah, we've done it multiple times now. Uh, we've a lot of success. We've had a lot of people switching. I think. For the RINCON users, I think everybody's probably seen the, the messages that have been put out that the, the Microsoft you know, is going to no longer support the software that the old RINCON platform was built on. That doesn't mean you can't continue to use it, 
but you're, you're kind of on your own. Uh, you know, one, one patch to a server from your IT group can blow it out. Uh, we brought in, actually, I know we're training, we're working with one of our clients today that has brought in data since 2005. So, yes, we can, not a problem. It looks like uh, Donnie says here, we wanted to track the barrier closure rate via SAP. That should not be a problem. Uh, that is on the on the API, API side. So that would just take a conversation uh, on how to get the data out. There's multiple ways to do it. So yes, we can do that one. Uh, Rob's got a question here. He says, does the system have to be pre-populated with each task that might be observed? I see a checklist that the observer completed in your example. That one is a, it does not have to be, it's a, it's a configuration by the client. So you don't even have to expose that if you don't want to. Um, if you want to use it, if you want to use the task tags, you can actually work your way into it um, later or not use it. It's whatever matches your process. Okay, Kevin's got a question here. It says, can the software query behavioral data for the people being observed to help identify common unsafe or safe behaviors and mentor them? So we do not expose that. What we try to do is the, the, the no blame, uh, no name, but there is a way that that can be done if that matches your process where you would, could add the name of the, the people there um, and you could track it that way and then query it through the, the uh, ad hoc report builder. Uh, it looks like that's it right now. Are there any other questions we have? Give me a second to type those in if you have any other questions. Well, I'd like to thank you all for your time. And again, please feel free to reach out. If something else comes up or you have another question, we're here to be able to help. Um, you know, there's for the, the RENCON people, from there's people from the old BST group that, that kind of know how this whole process works. And uh, Martine Hero has been helping us, you know, move the data around to, you know, be able to, to, to get what, what, you know, we need and help you be able to pull it out. So, you know, we're hearing some great results from the people that are using it. Um, you know, I, I think the big thing is is just you know making it easy and trying to get you guys to your data. So, any other questions come up? Oh, what's the cost for this? Uh, that that one I, I tried to breeze over it. Um, so the cost of this is based on users. So I can just give you the base level cost is thirty five hundred dollars for up to a hundred users. And, a, a, and that's per year, the $3,500. And a user is anybody that logs into the system. So if you're in a process where, you know, you have 15 people, you know, typing the observations in, but have, you know, 400 observers, we only charge for the logins that come into it. We have training available uh, that we can put into the package. Um, so there, there's a good start. I mean, you can always check with us. We can, we can do the other specifics on it. And I think you'll find out when I see a question, will our existing reports be imported from RINCON? I think you're going to find out that they're already there. Um, that's one that I should have had Martine on the call. He does a great job. The reports that you've been running where you may have entered the, the uh, put in your own queries or your own SQL in the background, if it's not there, you could just go rebuild it instantly in the ad hoc reporting. Perfect. And again, well, we have some user stories, but I think for the RENCON guys, Martine can really help you out, or Mike, you know, if you've worked with Dzinski in the past, but uh, we're here to help. Perfect. I think that Thanks kind of again, everybody. Oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah, I think that kind of wraps it up uh, for the webinar. I think that's most of the questions uh, that we've gotten. And if you do have any other questions, feel free to reach out to Lindsay or myself or Tim, and uh, we will get back to you. So thanks everybody again uh, for taking the time to attend today, and thank you, Tim, for uh, presenting that for us.
Thank you a lot. Everybody have a good day.